the view I take about free will is that of course we have free will because we have no choice. But Actually, we are all thinking the same way in our own life. Admitting that our success, for example, is due to our choices. And that if we fail, it's because of our deeds. But it can be all wrong. It's possible that one day if surgeon changed something in my brain, I could become someone else. Or maybe hating my beloved ones. In that case, can we say that a humankind is free? Or that a person put in jail, he went there by choice? Or if we are just biological machines forcing ourselves to believe in freedom? Most of your choices come from your mind and the mind basically is just combination of neurons connected with chemical signals signals and electri electrical ones and uh, a human is nearly around 18 billion neurons that control your physical parts but also your emo emotions and choices so we can't make a difference between you and your neurons because they are in your core Listen, Morty, I hate to break it to you, but what people call love is just a chemical reaction that compels animals to breed. It hits hard, Morty, then it slowly fades, leaving you stranded in a failing marriage. I did it. Your parents are going to do it. Break the cycle, Morty. Rise above. Focus on science. For people who smoke, for example, it's due to a brain secretion, which is named dopamine. This molecule affects their desire to smoke, what leads to addiction. And this is the case for other kind of addictions. In other words, people who are addicted to smoking or drugs are not blamed for not wanting to quit the addiction. But to quit it, they have to overcome a desire that comes from some molecules secreted in their veins. There is a weird famous experience about this, Olds and Miller experience. They took some red rats for the experience. And by chance, and uh, after deep brain simulation experience, which is a, a neurosurgical procedure involving the implantation of electrodes in the brain to send electro electrical impulse, and suddenly an uh, electrode has been moved from its place, and then. They noticed that a rat admired to be electrically impulsed. So they made a button. The rat can press to get electrical impulse in the brain. And the rat become immediately addicted to this button. So it pressed again and again it didn't eat or sleep no more till it died 
other experiments have been performed for humans. Robert G. Haight experiment, for example. By the way, this kind of experiments are actually prohibited nowadays for its immorality. So this scientist made the same deep brain simulation technique for people who are diagnosed with mental health problems like schizophrenia. Wow, that's a, that's a, a difficult word to pronounce. So, the scientist noticed that depending on each person and brain area where he implants to electrode, he got very different results for each patient. He even noticed some emotions like happiness, upsets, or fear. For example, a woman felt very happy after an electrical impulse and she wants to experience it again each time. In contradiction, another woman gets very upset. And, um, and we're here we see clearly our rat's brain and humans too uh, are just like a machine, you know. And if you play with it, you can break their natural system. So, I, or I personally, I could not accept these ideas at first, years ago. Uh, because it proves that uh, all what we believe we can control like likes or body and choices in life are actually things we have no choices in and finally we control nothing in this world and here someone can say that we are not talking here about the normal freedom of choice. And since these patients in the experiments do have mental problems and their brains are not insane. Which means an individual is free until he got a problem in the brain. Like mental disease or getting injured he then loses his freedom of choice um, actually that's a good thinking but see with me that uh, you know let's uh, let's uh, play a little game think and choose a city in the world that pops in your head right now a random city I will count to until three so one two three okay you decided which city you, you choose okay here is a question explain me how you arrived to this choice was it just was it, was it just like you know boom in your head, or you had or you had many cities in your head, like Tokyo, Rio, New York, Moscow, Oslo, Berlin. Um, maybe you choose New York or Paris because it's uh, your current city and uh, but most likely you didn't choose you know like uh, like uh, Brasilia or Brisbane or Kyoto in Japan you know like uh, a little city Even if there are, are actually cities you maybe really know. 
The reason for this is that your subconscious mind always chooses the first thing in its way. It doesn't put a lot of effort here to not lose its energy. So after your subconscious mind chooses the city, you get then conscious with that city chosen. And you try to justify this unconscious, unconscious choice. Which means it's like uh, if we give you a random city. And then we we'll ask you to explain why this city exactly. But in fact, the city wasn't your real own choice. And neither your subconscious choice. The view I take about free will is that of course we have free will because we have no choice. But um, A lot of experiences have been done for this and they prove it right. Like for example an experience where scientists um, give some people the choice to press right or left button. And after brain signal analysis, scientists could predict these people's choices before they got conscious about it. Yes, a lot of seconds ago, which means you had already took that decision. Seconds before you got conscious about it. It's true now that these experiences I have been showing you or telling you about were done with simple materials like pressing buttons and so on. But it's also simple now to imagine that even more complicated choices are controlled by the subconscious mind we try to justify it after like for example these companies that are playing <coughs> paying billion of dollars to advertising in TV or internet and this advertising is repeated lots in your TV screen or your laptop and you see it a lot of times so that uh, when you are at the supermarket you only choose these products you saw in advertising and you think that you choose the product over another because you simply liked it but in fact to advertising effects affect your subconscious so that it made the easiest choice for it. Actually, there are many other philosophical questions that one kind thinks of. We end up to lots of questions that I won't be answering here. But I wish that you to think about and try to answer, the, answer them. Maybe in the future, um, some big projects like the Human Brain Project that aims to simulate the human brain and study in it. This project can give a new definition of the free will. And it can eliminate this fear we feel towards these philosophical questions. But. Actually, my, me, myself, this is the first time I feel scared of what science can discover in the future about that. All what we have seen now proved that the freedom of choice doesn't exist. Imagine that we prove it more and be even very sure of that in the future. 
to be sure that a human is not more than a biological machine and that all his choices and the freedom we always imagined is just an illusion that has been programmed in us to survive, get old, married and so that at the end humanity can survive in this case those life remain meaningful 